We are rolling. Rolling. July 2018. Look Man, at that. first day of July. I think we're we're late to this game because we haven't done a podcast since last weekend. But man, we got to say right off the fucking bat, rest in peace to Vinny Paul. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, you can't name a more influential drummer in the last, metal and rock and roll in the last 30 years probably. I mean, there's a lot of influential drummers, but not to that on that level. That made it to that level. Yeah, and in the genre of heavy metal, too, you know? Pantera was the pentacle of metal in the 90s, for sure. It's a shame that it couldn't continue, you know? I think they had different visions. That's speculation, obviously. Yeah, you know, substance abuse problems and all that stuff. Yeah, it's a bummer, dude. I know we do these things a lot, but geez, it just seems like we're doing them all the time. We're talking about people that we've lost, you know? It's like... It never ends. Never ends. That's the price of getting old, I guess. That's the price of life. I mean, that it ends. Yeah, yeah eventually. Hopefully, we're going to keep... I mean, dude, you can't you can't look at that guy's life. I mean, sure, how he was, what, late 50s? Was he 57? 54, I believe. 54? Yes. I guarantee that dude has seen more in 54 years, though, than most people. Most people in three lifetimes. I'm sure he lived it till the lived it hard to the very end. We'll find out what happened to him. I mean, they say it's a heart attack, but uh, you know, a heart never, attack never know. <laughs> caused by. <laughs> yeah, he just it was his his time, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't fucking keep that pace forever. I mean, not everybody's Lemmy. Yeah, you kind of got to you got to dial down a notch with the party and, you know, I'm I'm sure I, who knows at this point because at the time of recording this, we don't know still why he passed away. Will we ever really? I mean, he passed away in his sleep, but I mean, we'll uh we'll we'll find out, but I I I'm sure his lifestyle had something to do with it. Who would be the last guy standing in Pantera? Probably Phil. Probably. Of, of, of all people. Haggard and fucking Angsty still. Yeah. Well, I just saw pictures on Instagram of him, and he's looking pretty slim and slender these days. He's yeah, he, yeah. He's definitely lost. He's he's not out of shape. I don't think. Yeah, he was. Uh, you know, looking good, man, for a fifty-year-old man. He was. Uh, yeah, he was down at the uh, some football camp for youth for New Orleans youth kids. You know, and uh, he was running around. looked He looked good. I was like, well cool you know at least he's taking care of himself lord no yeah if, i mean if you if you want any longevity i mean it's 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 a fucking fact you know you get it out what you put in for sure i mean if you sit around all the time and have no drive to get up off that couch and uh exercise and uh take control of your mind and your demons then you will pay the price one way or the other you know who knows how Vinny Paul like really lived, but we don't know, right? We don't know him, but we can uh, we can speculate, I guess. But uh, you know, rest in peace. I mean, the 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 standout Vinny Paul track to me. I mean, there's so many great Pantera songs. That's why that band was so fucking big. Was they were always focused on songwriting as opposed to just being ex extreme which they were also but they had amazing songs hook and groove it started with Vinnie Paul there with the groove those tasty fucking he made heavy metal just swing you know in the in the 90s when when that genre was really almost dead but, I mean, the standout track to me, because I've, I've been thinking about it the last few days, it's like, God, there's so many. But the the standout Vinnie Paul drum song for me is probably Becoming off of uh, Far Beyond Driven. That, you know, that end double bass drum pattern that's just off the fucking chain, you know. He's just yeah. Like, he, I'm, I'm sure the producer, Terry Date at the time, I'm just speculating. I don't know, but I'm sure it was. It didn't start out that way. They're like, I'm. It, it just seemed like. It seemed like as like listening to it and thinking about it, it's like, oh, I bet the band members are like, you can do something so much more there. So just push it to the max. 
push yeah. it to the fucking max. That's what that th- that song sounds like. Well, that's what that whole album sounds like, Far Beyond Driven. Everybody was just pushing themselves to the ultimate fucking peak of their fucking capabilities. Yeah, it's a good album, but it, I don't think it's overly... <clears throat> it's their most successful. Yeah. Yeah, obviously. I mean, that was a huge album. I won't lie. I mean, that's the album that I really got into Pantera. I had heard of them, heard people talk about them, and probably heard some songs off of Cowboys from Hell. But it wasn't until Far Beyond Driven that I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> vulgar Display. I'm sorry. I'm talking about Vulgar Display. Yeah I, re- yeah. I know we've talked about that before, but as far as Vulgar Display of Power, but it seems like with Cowboys from Hell and Vulgar Display of Power, power they were dialing in their original sound, and then on Far Beyond Driven, they just nailed it 100%. They were like, this is who this band is going to be for the duration. So, I see, off. but even after I thought Great Southern Trend Kill, they went a different direction with it. D- like, I thought did. their sound was different. And that's always been my favorite Pantera record, really, is uh, the Great Southern Trend Kill, but... Uh, you know, Far Beyond Driven is, uh, it's a classic. It's just a fucking classic. Uh, yeah. But I, I think, I think the Great Southern Trinco was their artistic, uh, stretching out. They're like, we're going to do some shit we didn't do before. And that was kind of their punk rock attitude. And not to, not to say Pantera was punk rock because they definitely weren't. They had that energy, but they had the attitude where it's like, you expect this from us. Well, we're going to turn around and do this then, you know. Yeah. I, I gained a lot of respect for those guys because it would kind of change. Even though they would always stay heavy, they would always, you know, dial it yeah, in. Yeah, they evolved like, you know, great bands do. I mean, some sometimes you'll you'll get that band that puts out that amazing first record and they're not able to capture that moment again. And they evolve into something else you don't like, or they continue writing that same album over and over again. Yeah. ACDC. But ACDC pulled it off. Slayer, of course, the same thing. They kind of always had the same kind of thing going on most of the time. But th- those all, those bands pulled that off. I mean, that's why you listen to ACDC. But, I mean, they had a singer change, too, which was a totally different vibe. I mean, their early 70s stuff is the stuff I love the most. I mean, the Brian Johnson stuff is cool. It's fun. But the uh, the Bon Scott stuff, it's, like, serious, kind of dark, you know. There's and, there's some Brian Johnson stuff that's, that's good. That's good. Thunderstruck, dude. It's one of my favorite ACs. For those about to rock? For those about to rock, yeah. I mean, that's a fucking Great. jam. Everybody's heard black, Back in Black 500 thousand right but it just because I don't want to hear it anymore just because it's so overplayed doesn't take away from the uh the credibility of the song I guess because I, I think I oh, look at that album not. that album in its entirety and think of that's one of the most overplayed ACDC albums yeah well yeah it's but, their biggest album yeah, it's, it's one of the biggest out al- rock albums ever released really as far as sales go and popularity go I don't think it's their best but yeah, you can't take anything away from that, man. If you have one of those albums and you're one of those bands, fucking congratulations! I mean, it's like their black album. <laughs> yeah, it, that's know? exactly cor- that's exactly right. Yeah, I think Metallica took a lot more backlash for the black album, though. I don't. Yeah, I don't think ACDC took much black backlash for that album. I think it was. I don't remember when that album came out, so I couldn't tell you. I think it was 80 or 81, so something around there. Maybe 82, but, I mean, I was too young to... You'd have to go back and do the research to actually find out how much... What the critics said, like, what, like that matters. Right. Like, we give a fuck. But, yeah. You know, fucking A. I guess they're going to uh, they're gonna bury him next to Dimebag Daryl. Yeah, I heard. Course. Yeah. Brian uh, Scott, my buddy, went down there. For the memorial, oh, did he? Yeah, he's a he's a super he's a hardcore fan. fan. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's a good time. Well, they, I think they buried him uh, today, yesterday. Uh, I think it was today. Yeah. Bummer, man. I think yesterday was the memorial. Who would have thought, man? Back in the day when we we're like listening to Pantera, that 
one would get fucking murdered on stage and the other one would die at 54. I mean, Jesus Christ. Terrible. Wasn't even on my radar back in the day. No, we didn't think about that shit. We're just like, this is a party, man. This is what people don't understand about Pantera shows because the music was had a lot of dark undertones, but it was high energy, a lot of fucking fun, man. I mean, I saw... I was at some Pantera shows that were not positive energy. <laughs> I remember many a Pantera show that was uh, people get their fucking faces angry. It was angry. It in was that angry. Pit. Well, yeah, but I mean, as far as positive energy goes, I mean, it's like male aggression. Go, everyone's on the same page. If you go to a Pantera show, expect to get fucking roughed up a little bit. That's yeah. what. That's the positivity of it. It is that everybody was, everybody knew the score, and if you didn't want to be in the pit, then get the fuck out of the way. You know. So, I mean, in that sense, it's, it was very positive. But, man, I was just talking about watching Pantera for the first time live with my girlfriend today. And she's like, do you have goosebumps? And it's it's 95 degrees in Ohio right now. <laughs> and she's like, do you have goosebumps? I was like, yeah, it's because I'm talking about this show. And I didn't even right. notice until she pointed it out. I was like, that's how it felt. You should have been there. It was it was a whole arena of people, and they were just it was a, a complete mosh pit on the floor from the front to the back, from the front of the stage to the back of the to the back of the floor, and then people were diving in from the first level. I'm like, I've never seen this shit before. It was yeah, intense madness. as fuck. Fucking super fun, and we, I think we were safely. It was me and you and uh, our buddy. I think yeah, went to that first one. 95? Where was that at? Far Beyond Driven Tour, uh, the Jar Arena in Akron. Was it Brad? Or Chris? Chris Brelo, maybe? Yeah, it was one of those guys. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, one of those dudes. Might have been Brad. You guys know Brad, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that one guy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But uh, that was awesome. And uh, I think they, uh, they even played Planet Caravan. It was so fucking intense, and they dropped it down a notch. Came back from the encore, played Planet uh, Planet Caravan. Well, that's what's cool about that band, though. Yeah, it was amazing. Never again, man. Flash in the pan kind of thing. Not not flash in the pan, yeah. but it was a, uh, you know, just a you know, lightning in a bottle. Like you, you can't gotta, say that, man. You, there's, I'm sure there's lots of lots of kids out at shows today saying that same thing about who. <laughs> I don't know. Break. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> I can't tell you. You don't want to compare that. But you look at some of the performers today, I mean, I can't get behind Lady Gaga, but there's going to be people in 20 years that are going to be reminiscing about Lady Gaga. I hope so, man. I hope she's – I don't – I'm not a fan. I've never heard of her stuff really on any kind of extensive level, but I hope her fans and I hope she gives her fans, you know, what they want, which, which is hopefully – challenging music that's that's the bands that i've listened to the most and that have stuck in my heart and mind and in my house under my roof when i've listened to this stuff a lot of them are 30 years old in my generation but they always challenged me as a listener and i think pantera was definitely one of those bands but i hope lady gaga fans get that same kind of thing out of her make you know out of her art which is pretty much to kind of sink her claws into you and make you think and make you relate on some kind of deeper level. We don't want any thinking going around these days, Bo. No critical thinking. Well, you know, we do, right? I think there's a movement towards critical thinking. It's getting there, man. It's a hard struggle, but yeah. I mean, I think you're right. I hope so. I think the whole podcast is not our podcast. I mean, I'm I'm sure we're enlightening thousands through our wisdom yeah <laughs> yeah our infinite wisdom we <laughs> always figure out <laughs> the problems of the world on this podcast so well it's that simple i mean you sum it up in 30 minutes give me any problem we'll talk economics we'll talk immigration some of that shit you know can be figured out some of it uh, has already been figured out what's hot in the news the uh i guess it, is it still hot i mean we, we kind of missed the boat but the, the immigration debate that keeps getting rehashed and over and over again and misinterpreted and you know all that stuff it's like oh here's the problem with these kind of hot button issues i think people 
on both sides of the aisle, whether you identify as a, a liberal or conservatives, I think universally we all want the same thing as far as, you know, treating people with respect. I think we just all have different viewpoints of how to do it. And so this this whole immigration bullshit that has been fucking man- manufactured by the media is designed to keep everyone divided, as usual, the same old bullshit story. And it's, uh, it, it, it's designed to destroy the opportunity for intelligent people to have a meaningful conversation about this stuff as opposed to an argument. I, I, my, my, my thing is this. You know, it's it's hard to to say that because you live on this side of the road that you shouldn't have access to things on the other side of the road. I have I have a problem with with lines on a map. I do. I, I get the argument that their their life is no less um, important and they should have equal access to the better things in life, but. It, it amazes me how they turn this to be a Donald Trump thing when this has been administrations for years now. Yeah. Bill Clinton, Obama, yep. had strong stances on immigration. Yes. There's sure. speeches where they are far more hard-lined than anything Donald Trump has said. Or at least on par with what he at said. At least on par, yeah. yes. At the very least. And... Trump's a racist, but those guys weren't racist. They were heroes. They were clapping in the aisles for him. Yeah. Now there's, you know, Congress members that are acting like they're for, they don't want to be a part of it, that they're above it. And four years ago, eight years ago, they were standing in the aisles clapping. And some of these congressmen that are now opposed to this voted for this shit. Right. To become law. That's fact. You guys can look it up if you want to. You probably won't. I mean, hopefully you do. If you're not privy... And I would like to think that anyone listening to this is already fucking hip to that shit. Because, yeah, again, it's just manufactured outrage. It's just continuous division of the fucking population. So 500 or 600 individuals in Washington, D.C. can rule over us. But Continue ruling over us. Yeah, I guess. Well, I, I mean, they That's got a us state of mind. through the bank. I mean, through the bank. Everybody's, everybody's indebted. You're an indentured servant, whether you want to believe it or not. Well, what's the alternative, though? Living in a fucking cave? I'll take right. this indentured servitude. <laughs> it's, life's pretty good. Yeah, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. There there are lots of complaints going around, though. Yeah, oh, you know, yeah, baseless. There are some. I mean, I understand the whole premise of not wanting borders and stuff, you know, not wanting, you know, I get that. That is a noble <laughs> idea. You got a horse dog going yeah, down. Yeah, the horse to, dog's in the greenhouse. We, Paul, on on the Galloway estate, he has a greenhouse and a dog that's the size of a horse. And this horse dog has gone into the greenhouse. Who knows up what he's no doing. Up to no good. He's nefarious. Up to no good. Nefarious animal. What a ne- he's bored because no one's paying attention, so he's going to get on there and fuck with stuff because that's what puppies do. Yeah, he's six month old, 150-pound dog. He's not 150 pounds yet. He's about... He's 7, 90 pounds. <laughs> 70,000 pounds. He's figuring it out. But, you know, anyway, what were we saying? We're, uh, well, what you know, what you can always do is, you know, tell your constituents that they should go harass people who have other opinions of yours that differ from yours, I should so, say. You talking about Maxine Waters? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, she just got hers because conservatives are starting to do that shit to her. They went to her house and did it. It's like, how do you like that? If that if that's your tactic, I mean the right is starting to do that now. That's very concerning to me. I was like because when people on the right get angry, they have guns. <laughs> they have guns, <laughs> and the people on the left don't believe in that shit. Right. Well, at least not personally. They believe in it wholeheartedly when it comes to the state. They think the state should, should be the only ones to have guns. It's like, okay, well, so you want to give all your guns to Donald Trump? Do you? No. But I I don't know, man. I guess big picture. 
I don't think that shit's holding holding water too much anymore. Cause you go outside, you turn that fucking TV off and that goddamn cell phone off, and most people are getting along pretty well, I would say. At le- you know, at least leaving each other alone, and that's all you can ask for. Yeah, really. Baseline. I'd agree with that. I don't see much What's hostility, that? but that's <laughs> Marshall. Stop it. <laughs> the horse dog has now. Taking the garden hose. Yeah, he's chewing on the garden hose. He's like, what? I'm sorry, man. We'll have to take a picture of him. Put him on Instagram. Yeah. Fucking dog. Yeah, I don't I don't think the uh, whole... Uh, the whole thing, the whole tactic of harassing people when they go out for dinner... Well, it, t- it, it completely it, backfires, though, which I think yeah. is hilarious. I'm going to tell you 100% hilarious that... The, that gay couple that tried to force the the wedding cake makers to make them a cake. Yeah. We're told that they didn't have to do that, that they can be willing participants or unwilling. They don't have to do business with people that they do wish to not do business with. By a narrow margin. Though. By a narrow margin. Yeah, which is concerning. It's like, hey, hey man. Right. I, I, I get it. And then. I mean, and the, not to say, to preface this, though. Yeah, I, I, I think. Me or you with the fucking if we had a, a bakery, of course we just make the cake for someone. But I mean, as far when when you when you uh, institute the force of government to do to force someone to do what you think should be done, that's immoral. I don't give a fuck. Right. I mean, those then you're infringing on someone else's right to yeah, be free. Yeah. Yeah. You should have a right to, sadly, discriminate if you want to. Not to say, it's good or bad maybe sometimes it is or isn't but it's but then just, we go back to the free market weeding yes. out shitty businesses yes that's how you do that if you don't like a business that is uh discriminating against a uh, and, perceived and marginalized group of people then don't give them your money and then look at what happened at that red hen and this just plays off of it you know they're all these you know lefty extremists you know saying that they Good for them kicking Sarah Huckabee Sanders out of their restaurant, but it it completely backfired on them because now she's had to quit her part of whatever community she committee she is, and their Yelp reviews are in the toilet. Yeah, they're gonna go out of business, and they'll likely go out of business. Yeah, I mean in Virginia of all places. And and that good just goes back to my 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 observation that most people aren't on board with this kind of narrative you know in the real world you can get on facebook you'll find a bunch of retards that you know like, yeah i'm fucking outraged but you go out into the real world and it's like just fucking mellow the fuck out i right. mean for instance if i had a restaurant i mean i don't like bernie sanders i don't like what he's saying i think he's fucking retarded and probably not a very smart human being that's just my opinion i'm allowed to have that but if he came into my restaurant and he was civil I would serve him. Would you just be nice? And I'll be nice to you, man. That's it. I don't give a fuck about your ideology. As long as you're a nice person and you're not hurting anyone when you you're out in your everyday life and being a fucking piece of shit. Well, that's the thing is this whole media outrage has, you know, anyone that's on Donald Trump's side in this negative light that was there... How many presidents before? Yes. It's the same situation, but now you're taking a stand against... And I, I, I hate to sound like a, a Trump, you know, supporter, because I'm not. A Trumper? I'm not a trumpet. I was gonna, trumpeter. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. It's like, we're not... Har- Me or you are not hardcore Trump supporters, but we're just looking at the situation objectively. And I have a memory. So I can think back to what the last president did. And he's done a lot of awful shit, too. You need to hold him to the same standards, which is not happening. So that's the glaring fucking hypocrisy. You know, and I'm not even that... I don't even remember that much about it because it wasn't that big of a deal. You know, it was in the background. I wasn't as politically aware or I wasn't paying attention. You know, I didn't see a lot of the, the video that I see now that people are using to compare. You know, and you start digging and you think skeptically, you know, skeptically about the situation and it's like <laughs> how are you guys coming to this conclusion now and why was it okay for eight years ago 
You know, Obama. I mean, there's a reason it, that they, he dropped that many bombs. <laughs> yeah, 100,000 bombs or some shit. And not a word said. Nobody I mean, cares. On brown people, man. Most r- of them are. Right. Are. And nobody's nobody's championing, you know, the fucking cause. And he still think everyone still thinks he is the fucking savior. Yeah. Well, here here's how I will I will do my part to destroy the whole savior narrative on Barack Obama because I does everyone remember the grabbing the pussy comments from Trump? You know. Yes. I do, yeah, because that was the center of outrage for a lot of women. Which, eh, hey, understandably, right? I mean, I've I've never hung out with dudes that like say that shit seriously and mean it. I mean, what he said, he was talking was he serious. What? Yeah, was he? He sounded drunk. Over exaggerating. Yeah, they, they're they're hanging out. Being they're ridiculous. talking. Yeah, and they're talking about a subset of women. He didn't, you know mainly gold diggers and he's probably correct because he's a billionaire a famous billionaire they, you know he was probably speaking from experience it's like these women will let us do whatever we want to a certain degree and not to say that's right or wrong or we agree with it or disagree with it i'm just saying that's what i got out of that yeah, tape. to say that that subsect of women doesn't exist is a fucking lie <laughs> so so yes so yeah he was speaking some kind of truth even though his language was very it was gross it was disgusting oh it made me fucking triggered <laughs> But I mean, is I'm an it? adult. I can handle. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't talk like that, you know. But I, you know, what, you know, whatever. But then you can switch over to the Obama boner video, which is, I, I believe, is still on YouTube. And if nobody's seen it, it's on the airplane, yeah, it is Barack Obama on an airplane talking to a, what sounds like multiple young girls, probably. And to be fair, I would say they're at least 21, probably 22. And he's got a raging hard on. And he's dancing around with this hard on. And where's the fucking outrage, man? I mean, hey, if there's no, it, all you got to do is watch the Obama boner video and imagine that it's Trump. And then let me know how you feel. Right. You know? Then your principles are universal. Then you can be outraged, and then we can sit down and talk about it, maybe, or not. <laughs> but that's the glaring hypocrisy of all this stuff. It's just it's yeah. garbage to me. Garbage. Agreed. Yeah. I'm glad we cleared all that up. You know? We'll see. Problem solved. Doing our part. See? Yeah. We, I mean, we solve all the problems of the world. I mean, it's like an episode of Scooby-Doo. Yep, just rip the mask off at the end. It's like, oh. What's what else is going on music wise? What do we got going on this week? Not much, huh? Not much going on. Mm. Oh yeah. Ink yes. and the Clink's coming up. Ink and the Clink coming up. Uh, the incarceration festival. I I'm think down for now. a Sunday. I believe that's corrosion of conformity, black label society. Clutch and clutch. <laughs> Seven dust. Sixty five bucks. Worth every dime, dude. Yeah. I think. I think. Let's, yeah. let's get our tickets for that. But you know what else is bullshit? Bullshit. Somebody just, uh, like this, I guess this last week, uh, a an a anonymous Twitter account accused Maynard James Keenan oh, of, yeah. of rape back, back in like 2000. And <laughs> I heard I heard skeptical things about him back in the uh, late 90s, 2000s. But here's the disturbing part. The disturbing part is just knowing that. Why that got so much traction? I mean, you can hear disturbing things or not disturbing things, but if there's zero fucking evidence and an anonymous Twitter account just typing shit on their fucking computer and all of a sudden Maynard James Keenan is a rapist, I mean, sorry, I'm not on board. I mean... No, no, I don't believe in that. You provide the evidence and then we will discuss it. But other than that, there's... There's nothing that needs to be said about it. No, I mean, I, I heard a story once, but it, you know, for me to even tell it'd be, you know, third party shit. And it was just that he was picking the hottest girls to come backstage. That's but, every okay, rock star. That's rock star. It's every rock star singer ever. <laughs> right? Famous guy ever. Maybe not so famous. I've seen not so famous guys do the same shit. Or, well. I mean, and right or wrong, 
Okay. Yeah, whatever. They went back. Yeah. I don't. I don't you, to call that man a rapist, you, that's a stretch. I mean, you're gonna have to prove it, man. That's that's. Well, there's not nothing they can prove now. It's just they're just trying to cash in on the Me Too movement, you know, which is taking away. Well, by the way, that whole fucking movement is taking away from real rape victims. You know, because it's giving voice to people that are just fucking angry, right? Whatever, of their shitty lives. So they got to take away from the actual rape victims out there. You're taking the spotlight away from them. So I don't know, man. It's a crazy world we live in. You know, how do we navigate through this? I guess he responded. He was like, just turn your phone off. This is all bullshit. I mean, yeah. this is just an allegation, and that's all it is. And until evidence comes out I believe him I uh, wouldn't I'm not counting on any evidence coming out but no. fuck who knows who knows who really knows who knows I mean all it takes is you know a couple girls to have regrets about some decisions they made when they were a kid two decades ago two decades ago I'm thinking about you know he's rich maybe I can cash in on this and I'm not saying that's all of them Maybe some shit happened, and now they feel empowered to say something. I'm not putting it out of you know the realm of possibility. Yeah. But not, if I'm that's a possibility, so is the alternative. Yes. I'm not saying it didn't or did happen. I'm just saying. We can't fucking hang a man because of an allegation. It's innocent until proven guilty. That's it. On that's that it. note. We're closing up shop. Up. Yep, kind of hammered. I've been at wineries hey. all day because it's summertime in Ohio. It's 95 degrees, and we're having a good damn time this summer. We're going to have some shrimp tacos and some more wine. We have no shows to promote yet, but we're working on a new band. Yeah, we're getting close. Shit's sounding fucking good. We'll get out there eventually with new music, and uh, we'll let you all know. Getting close. Until then. I guess we're going to sign off. Peace. Or until next week or whenever. Until whenever. More podcasts coming soon. Peace.